Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome to Hack My Growth. Today we're going to be talking about the power of BI when it comes to digital marketing. All right, let's go. Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Hack My Growth. If you got a moment, please hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you as part of our community. So today we're going to be talking about BI and BI uh, really from a broader term. For It means a lot of different things for different people. For some people, it's, it's a specific tool that they use online that visualizes their data. For other people, it's a complete process, everything from you know planning to building a, a data warehouse center and with, with all your, your different tools and then actually you know, analyzing that data, executing that data, delivering reports in order to make data-driven decisions. So my personal belief is that we all in the marketing agencies, in the business world, should be data-driven because data tells us the truth. It tells us what people are doing, the actions that they're taking. But we can only understand it if we analyze the data because we've got these billions and billions of points of data, but not all of them really mean something. And a lot of times I feel like we're focused on the things that make us feel good rather than the things that actually could lead to actionable growth for our businesses. And I'm not alone in that. There's there's a number of studies that are done. And there was a recent study done uh, about data and how businesses are using data. And what it's found out that only 7% right now of marketing departments are able to deliver real-time data analysis. That means data that they can get real-time, seeing what users are doing, and then apply that data back into action to make better decisions. Only 5% can actually measure the bottom line impact of their marketing campaign. So are we actually driving revenue growth? Only 5% of the industry are actually able to prove that. And I know there's a number of factors in there. You've got to get buy-in. You've got to build out all this closed loop reporting. And it can be difficult. But the reality is that only 5% of us are doing it. I mean, only 5% of us can really quantify the results of our marketing efforts. In 42% have installed more than 20 different analysis tracking codes or some sort of software to help them figure things out uh, over the last few years. Now, what's happening is not that we're using all of this to get more data, is that we're trying to find these quick wins. So we install something, we don't feel like we're getting the results, we install something else and something else and something else. So we're rip and switching all the time and it's actually costing about 25% of the marching marketing budgets for most companies when you're doing this. Now, I'm just as guilty. I've been on this path of trying to understand how we can use data to really quantify our results, to show our clients that we're doing exactly what we said we were going to do. I mean, even for my own business, I want to use this data to make sure that I'm making smarter decisions. And I've totally been guilty of, of you know, uh, the rip and replace, you know, method where, I, oh, I didn't see what I wanted to see, so let's try something else. But what this has led to is really not data-driven businesses. This has really led to businesses that are just grabbing for something to hold on to, grabbing for information that might possibly help them out. Another one of the problems is that we're tracking the wrong metrics. Maybe you've read some of my posts in the past, but I, I've been hammering on this thing that I like to call vanity metrics. And vanity metrics are metrics that make us feel good, but don't really tell us anything. They usually lack action. Uh, and, they're, and they're usually made up of metrics that are important, but we like to silo them and use them just to kind of make us feel good. Like for traffic, for instance. Traffic goes up, we assume that what we're doing is working. But the reality is, is that traffic could go up but our click-through rate could go down. Uh, so people actually aren't engaging. Our bounce rate gone up. So yeah, we're driving people, but they're leaving. Or maybe it's it's traffic from places that we don't want traffic from. So just looking at traffic and saying, well, we increased your traffic 25% last month. What kind of traffic is? What did that traffic do? Really, we should start looking at, at, at metrics that are are actionable, but metrics that are also tied to people, people who are interacting with us, engaging with us. Another metric that people are obsessed with is rank tracking. You know, in the SEO world, where are you ranking? How high are you ranking for a term? Are you going up or down? You know, I have people all the time that they just Google themselves and they say, well, I Google myself here and this is where I'm at. I Google myself here and this is where I'm at. But the reality is, Rankings change all the time. Algorithms are making switches and changes all the time. Google makes five, six hundred changes to the algorithm a year. That's multiple times a day. And then you've got you know different devices. You've got the mobile index. You've got the, the desktop index. Then you've got people that are, are, are doing location-based searches. Maybe they haven't cleared their browser history. There's so many factors, but we focus on what we're doing in these ranking positions. And it drives us crazy because what do we do with that? You know, Do we throw more content or links after it? And now rank's important because it gives us an idea of what people are looking for. 
but sometimes it, it's not really a metric that's actionable. And really what these, these metrics are, they're short-sighted. It's like we're obsessed with trying to win tomorrow. We see people have success online. We see companies that appear to have just grown up overnight and become overnight successes, but we haven't seen the years and years of hard work and, and that they've put in with the emphasis on using data to make better decisions. So that's another reason that the data is helpful. But the problem is we, we continue to track the wrong things. And we also usually have an ambiguous goals. You know, I want to grow my business. Well, what does that mean? Do you want to grow revenue? Do you want to go market share? Do you want to go profitability? I mean, that's really ambiguous. You know, we start, we need to start defining a little bit better, better goals for ourselves because there's really no clear end. We don't know what success looks like. And, and then we don't define a path to conversion. We don't know what we want people to do to get them to where we want them to go. So we're not really sure where we should send somebody on our website. What's that next step for them? So these are some of the problems that are facing when we're trying to put business intelligence into our business so that we can become data-driven. So what is the solution? Well, we need to become data-driven and we need to stop looking at BI as a tool or a, uh, a set of tools, but instead as, as a culture and be begin to build data intelligence, business intelligence into our culture where, where people are starting to see data as a vital part of our business. And then we also need to define what is true. We need to have one version of the truth. With all of these different data sources and pulling data from all of these different places, it can start to contradict each other. So pulling that data in, having it having it very brought in and, and kind of cleaned, you know, and, 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 and processed so that we know what all these data points mean and that they're defined and that they all mean the same thing, that there's one version of the truth across the board so that Anybody in any department knows what certain metrics mean, and that's really the importance of having a data dictionary where you define these terms out. What, is, what does it mean to, to, to see, what does a bounce rate mean? You know, what does traffic mean? What does a conversion mean for your business? What does revenue mean for your business? All of these different points that you're tracking, they, they need to have you know, a specific you know, explanation for what they are so everybody understands them, so that then when they get to the data, all the data is in one place. We can have one version of the truth. We can pull the data from one data source. That way, the department over here is not pulling from one place and the department over here is pulling from another place and they're conflicting. And now you're really not being data driven. You're, you're siloed yourself again. The goal behind BI is a culture where we have a, a set of data that we can use to make better decisions. And then use what you have. There's a lot of great tools out there that can help you monitor website traffic or user engagement and a lot of those tools are really great but the problem is we don't usually take time to learn them and use them to their full potential and a lot of times people think that maybe google analytics isn't good enough but the reality is as much of the time we're not using google analytics to its full capabilities we're not using google tag manager or search console and those all do connect to each other and there is a lot of powerful data that we can get to that so instead of just trying and trying and trying all these new tools Maybe we should start smaller and get really good at tracking people in certain areas and using that data to validate or disprove our assumptions so that we can then begin to move. HubSpot, that's another tool that we use. It's, it's got a lot of data in it, but again, you need to know what you're looking for and be able to process that data and understand how that tool extracts data. WordPress, it's got a lot of plugins that you can install to track and do a number of things. And there's other tools out there. There's a number of other platforms that you can use, but whatever you're using, use it. And really learn how to use it and learn how to put it into practice so that you can get the insights from your data that you need to get. We've already talked about data uh, dictionary. You need to invest in analytics and not just in, in products, but invest in the time. Invest in training. Invest in learning what they, these mean. All of the tools that I mentioned above have free tutorials to help you understand how they work. And, and what the different metrics mean and, and how they pull data and then how you can interpret that data. So you need to invest time in getting to understand how you're collecting data and then how you can use that data in a practical application. You need to test your assumptions. You know, write your ideas on the board and then test them and, and see if, if the results affirm or deny what you thought possible. And this is a really powerful tool because a lot of times we get attached to our ideas emotionally. And we begin to believe that our ideas are the best because they came from us and they're personal to us. But the reality is that can sometimes hinder us from growth. What we need to do is have an idea. Let that idea be an idea. Put it out there, run the test, run some, some marketing 
around that, collect the results, and see if it worked. And then you can use that data that you've collected, which is now called lag information, you can use that as lead information. So now we know this, so now it's lead information, and now because of what I know, I'm gonna try this. So now what you're doing is begin to use data, and you're becoming data-driven. That's where testing your assumptions coming in. Define success. Again, you gotta have an outcome. If, if you're going to really be tracking this data, you can say, wow, we saw X, Y, and Z, but what does that mean? And that's where the goals come in. That's where the outcome comes in. That's where we, we begin to really define what it is we're trying to do as a business as a whole. And then lastly, we, we want to start to enable real-time visualizations. Uh, um, company leaders love to see this stuff because it's usually high-level metrics that helps them know that we're pointing in the right direction. But real-time visualizations are also nice for people on your team to be able to come in and see what's going on. You know, Google actually released a really great tool called Google Data Studio. So if you're just getting into visualizations, you can build reports with Google Data Studio where people can get real-time up-to-date information. Google Analytics has real-time tracking where you can watch what people are doing right now on your website. That's just free. That doesn't cost money. So there's really no reason to start trying to apply it to your business. Business intelligence is extremely important for any business in today's culture. We're collecting billions upon billions of pieces of data, but a lot of us aren't using them to drive better results. Underneath all this data are powerful insights about the people who are using our sites, interacting with our business, and we can use that information to learn more about them, to better serve them, to build better products, to build better customer service, to really change the world around us if we could just understand what these metrics are, and then how we can apply them back to our business. And the digital marketing community, the digital marketing space, is a prime ground to be data-driven as a culture, but we first must embrace business intelligence. So again, just as a recap, the problems are most of us aren't data-driven. We're tracking the wrong metrics, and we're way too ambiguous when we're talking about our goals. But what can we do? We can become data-driven. We can begin to apply business intelligence to our business starting today. So I hope you learned a little something important in this video this week. If you've got any questions on business intelligence tools, how to start, how to set things up, please comment below. Connect with me. I'd love to help you out and continue the conversation. And until next time, happy marketing. Hack, 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 hack.